previously on Talk That Talk. Go well. Go ahead, Portia. We ain't have social media. Yeah, you had to physically go and meet people. I mean, Facebook was around in its little early stages. I think I had Instagram by the time I graduated, but they weren't like they are now. Like you, we road tripped. You had to physically go look people in the face, introduce yourself, share your information get quizzed up. All of that took place. So we knew how to communicate. I still have relationships with those people that I met. I still am able to, if I go to their city, link up with them. I I just think that that physical presence, that learning different things from different chapters, um, getting to know people, being able to physically show up on somebody's yard, introduce yourself, have a conversation with them, You know, everybody figure out, everybody good. And then we have a great time. Now, I just, I don't get it. And, you know, it's not their fault, but I think that's an element that that personal interaction is missing for me. And that's why I feel like, and it's it's not their fault, but I feel like it was better for us. You know, those connections, that, that process, of I think being in that hot seat when you first cross, it just it helped me. I can speak in public now. I you know I'm I don't panic in those kind of situations. You know it just it added some things to the experience, and I just don't know if they get that now. I mean, to me, that would be the biggest difference is that people don't go nowhere no more. They connect on social media, and yeah. I mean, they they put they post their informational flyers on social media. They post their interest meetings on social media. Shit, at one point they had a Zoom, you know, Zoom, Zoom interest meetings, Zoom informationals. Uh, yeah, I had to walk past a billboard, you know, that had all of them was posted in one spot. <laughs> you had to go see by the union and all these different you know places to see when stuff was gonna happen. You know, they told us, but. You know, I'm walk. I'm sneaking in Brown Hall. They had posted out probate fly. I wasn't out yet, and I snatched one off the wall in the cut because it was a billboard back there. You know that that kind of stuff. You don't. You don't. They don't have to do that anymore. You know, that's my I think perspective. The, I, and Sarah is right. I think the mantra of like really you had to be there is very yeah. different uh, yeah. when you experience those types of moments, right? Because nowadays, yeah, it gets out on social media and whatnot, but back then you know yeah people had to actually read the flyers and be like okay that's what's popping you know on that particular date um you know just like um i had some homeboys i grew up with they crossed over at prayer view um and and so we have big probate shows where it's like nobody misses that day right like you know there's nothing else going on that's important on that particular day Uh, and so everybody comes out at the same time uh and it's like a it's it's a like a major show. It's like uh, in in New Orleans, it's small because the city is is you know it's it's a great city, but it's very small. So it's like another one of the things where it's like people the, the city shuts down on that day because hey, this is what's popping, right? So uh, I I think that's very much different. It's not that oh okay I can just watch it later on uh, IG and see what happened. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, you had to be there for, like that night. You know, everybody that shows love is there. Um, you're there and embrace those types of moments. You got, you know, the people that knew you was online, the people that didn't know you was online. It's the after part. Like, it's just, it's just a major difference uh, in terms of what used to be and what's now. Um, it's also the step shows. Um, you know, I, I've had the privilege of, you know, stepping at Bayou Classic in New Orleans, like just... You know, those things were so much different than where it was like, nah, you had to be there to see it mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, and, and, and we, we still embrace it. You know, we still uh, just celebrated uh, 20 years this past uh, November and we were sitting there watching the, uh, you know, the probate tape on, the, uh, on, on social media. But it's like, man, but man, you remember such and such screaming your name or this, not, like it was just, it was different. That's true. So what do y'all say? And and I don't know what you all's interaction is with younger members, 
um, undergraduate members, so on and so forth. But what do you say to those undergraduate members when they say, man, y'all just don't understand, man. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, oh, what, what is the response? What, what do you say to that? I was once young and I did it all. And I promise you, I promise you, I did it. I probably can say I did it better, but I won't <laughs> dog you or down you. I need to uplift you. So Larry would say that. I would. Larry, Larry would say he did it better. But when I tell them, I say, you know what? If I say it, you won't believe it. You'll, you'll just have to, I'll, I'll actually go around the younger brothers. I'll actually make it a point to always talk to them and talk to them around people who are, you know, was there with me. Because Quan is, you know, Quan is my crab brother, and he's a band director. So not only is he always involved with band, he's always involved with Prairie View. So if I go to these young guys and I say, hey, man, you know, y'all need to do it like this. This is how we got things going. This is how things were able to get, you know, situated, and it's how we were structured. They'll just, you know, look at me like crazy. But if Quan says it, and Quan, you know, is a, is to them, he's an outsider. But if he says it, they, you know, look like, oh man, you know, they call me Unc. Oh man, Unc, Uncle's telling the truth. Like Uncle's really, really about that. It, it was, but you know, they always, they always test it, just like kids. You know, your kids don't think that you was the man. Your kids don't think that you smart. They don't think that you, you know, tough or fast or any of that stuff. You just gotta, you know, keep on proving it to them. Uh, for, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, well, Jafar and then Portia. <clears throat> so for me, when you talk about the errors, when I came into Omega, there was a shift in Omega in 2000. And so when I say what's different from when I came in to now, when I first came in is when uh, a structured way of coming into the grad chapters uh, was trying to be established. It took me, I, I, I tried three different times before I got into this great fraternity. Uh, so with my perseverance, once I got in, I saw it change right in front of my eyes. So back when I was coming in, the rules were different. The quote was different. The, the status quo was different. And now these young folks have all this paraphernalia on, wrong colors, wrong places it's almost as if some of the traditions have changed like uh for instance uh there are a lot of brothers now who are wearing purple and gold with black on black jackets if you had put on a black jacket back in the 90s uh, the early 90s the beginning 2000s you wouldn't have left with that jacket on your body period so you know times change things change uh i just feel like even though i came in a, in a really transitional time i appreciate those moments i appreciate those old school bros looking at me and telling me i don't even know if you're worthy i really had to prove myself uh from the jump compared to now young as you bring that check or that money order come on in join us i, I don't care for that part 